All right, then. <laughs> One last time. <laughs> I was scared, I gasoline, we deadly when we're drunk. So shut your face and settle down, you sneering little punks. The space is vast, you are small, it's black and bitter cold. The book is lying open, there are tales to be told. Is burning lower and the stars are shining bright. Which stories grim as pistol and to tell to you tonight? So grab yourself a mug of beer, chin of vodka, hold it near. The book is lying open, there are tales to be told. Killers and renegades, liars and thieves, welcome! We are the mechanisms, the crew of the starship Aurora, roving through the galaxy, having fun, violence, adventure, violence. Violence! Allow me a brief moment of self-indulgence to introduce to you the crew of our mighty starship. There's Drumbot Brian, our pilot. Ashes O'Reilly, quartermaster. Gunpowder Tim, our master at arms. Baron Marius von Raum, ship's doctor. Raffaella Lacognizzi, science officer. Ivy Alexandria, our archivist. And last, for the very opposite of least, myself, Johnny Deville, your a humble captain. <laughs> really? We're dying and you can't give me this. Sometimes I don't know why I bother. So mind your manners, Sonny Jim, we've seen beyond the stars And if you want to prove it, I can show you all the scars So no, the void is screaming mad, no happy endings out there, lad Book is lying open, there are tales to be told Yes, we are, for one last time, the Mechanisms And we have just a few stories for you it's a shame, but all things, all people must die. Some of us sooner than others. <laughs> but first we thought we'd tell you one of our grander tales. Shall we? The Bifrost Incident. Any school child could tell you about it. The fall of the old order, 200 years of Asgardian hubris come together in a single, epoch-defining event. The maiden voyage of a train through the stars. Vanished without a trace. For decades it had been old Lady Odin's passion project, her long-sought legacy. Shoot a locomotive through that man-made rainbow wormhole. Turn the time between planets from three months to three days. The tests had all been passed with quite literal flying colours, and the train was deemed safe. And what a train it was, gilded with gold and swirls of bismuth mosaic. Every high up nose-turning Asgardian hobnob was on that voyage, or risk Odin's displeasure. So when it didn't come out the other side, who's left to rule? In the chaos that followed, there wasn't really time to look into what happened to the train itself. And that's where I come in. Inspector Second Class Lifrasir Edda, new Midgard Transport Police. Because the Ratatosk Express has finally arrived on Midgard, 80 years late. There's not much left. Just the ruin of the engine room and a pair of twisted, blackened skeletons. And the black box. It's as much a history project as a crime scene at this point, but combing through the data still comes down to me. First recording is Odin's launching speech. Nearly a century ruling Asgard, you'd think she'd be a better public speaker. Not rambling on about the glories of her pet science project as though exporting quicker tyranny to Midgard was all she'd ever dreamed of.
peak at 250 miles an hour as the tracks engage and then the odometer starts to go a little bit strange can't quite figure out how fast it's moving or if it's standing still external cameras are only black and white but still give a sense of the shifting undulating hues inside the bifrost the train is underway and should be out the other side in just under three days though there's no one left alive could tell you why I watch those opening hours intensely, looking for anyone or anything that might have led to the train's destruction. For a while I come up empty. Plenty of folks seem unhappy to be making the journey, and even Odin seems less than entirely comfortable, spending every waking hour staring through the glass wall of her personal observation carriage. But there's nothing I can put my finger on as too out of place. Then I see Loki lurking in one of the locked passenger compartments and everything starts to make a little bit of sense. Not much sense, of course, because Loki was supposed to be dead already, but before that she'd spent 15 years working with a Midgardian terrorist cell. So if anyone was behind the Bifrost incident, it would be her. On the video feed, she doesn't look well. Drawn, haggard, she just sits there, clutching her head for hours and hours hardly the behaviour of a ruthless saboteur. Records from before the incident are patchy, but I'm still able to get a copy of her arrest and sentencing report. Execution apparently carried out as ordered, but there's something else. Loki used to work on the Bifrost, right at its inception, decades before the incident. Perhaps Odin decided that that expertise was too valuable to lose, and secretly swapped out execution for something that kept her knowledge intact. But even through the grainy playback of the video feed, it's clear that whatever she did instead messed Loki's head up. Something awful. Somewhere deep inside me fester memories and dreams I try to pin them down but I can't hear beyond the screams all I recall with clarity 
is sunshine and his merry song. What are these thoughts so vague and dark beyond? Deep inside my mind, what is there to find? She thought as it couldn't be, is it me or just a dream? Crying above without any way she can her silent scream. Is this rage out of cage or was she kind of always chained in my soul? Can I come from my mind that which I left behind, making me whole? Flashes like camera balls fire in my brain. Is this truly me? Am I going insane? Fame bloody flashes, I watch people die. And if that was me, then who am I? Locked away from the Thalessa, say what I may truly deserve Through my tears I can hear echoes of creeping through whispering words In my soul taking hold, trying to make me hold, bringing me back What I saw came before least what gave me more twisting the track Flashes like camera bulbs firing my brain Is this truly me? Am I going insane? In vain bloody flashes I watch people die And if that was me then who am I? Flashes, I watch people die And if that was me, then who am I? This cannot be But here I see a face I know so well Loki should be dead, but here she sits, a broken shell. Bald and died, and for that crime, we watched her burn in bloody pain. Did Odin think to save her for her train? If we were betrayed, there's a price to pay. Fury like thunderbolts burns in my veins If that's truly her, then I know who's to blame Odin passed judgment, we all watched her die But if that is Loki, she'll pay for her lies Fury like thunderbolts burns in my veins If that's truly her, then I know who's to blame Odin passed judgment, we all watched her die But if that is Loki, then pay for all your lies that that was Thor, high up in Asgard, tips to take over from Odin when she finally loses it. Thor has something of a history with Loki, used to be friends even. Thor wasn't there when Loki, Odin and Balder first tested the Bifrost. But he was there when Loki's bomb killed Balder, five years after she disappeared into the Midgard underground. Loki used one of the Bifrost tests to send a pair of hijacked missiles through to Asgard. Missile 1 destroyed the track, setting the project back another decade. Missile 2 killed Balder. Thor's file doesn't paint him as the particularly forgiving sort, and as he strides through the train towards Odin's carriage, it's unclear how much of his anger is seeing the woman who killed Balder still lives, and how much is over what Odin has done to her mind. The audio quality on the confrontation is difficult to make out, but it looks to be intense. Oh, Tin, 
we have seen near a century of people born. But now all that I see is just an agent born. You waste as God's wealth on this train. And your mercies defiled Loki's brain. When you do To die in her right mind And on the edge of the track Could not be left behind You tried her Contempt her To die Then saved her And now we know why You've traded your Nothing in my eyes Shut up and listen to reason for once While she's alive, you're in danger The train's in danger Everything you have worked for is in danger I leave you to the ground, Loki Or I will I'm sorry if you feel that way This gentleman was slowly trying to come serving five life sentences on the prison colony of hell. The highest ranked member of the Midgardian resistance. Could she be here for Loki? No. No one but Odin knew no Loki was alive. Then I notice Garm and Skoll working the tables, Hattie at the bar. Every one of the serving staff is from Fenrir's old crew. And I recall that they built Bifrost stations on every planet in Yggdrasil, even before the first voyage. They were planning a jailbreak, one that took almost the entire Asgardian government hostage. I watch as Sigan moves among the unnoticed Midgardian servants, whispering reassurance and revolution. Corner, a new world being born as Loki 
once swore to me in the face of Asgard scorn We're nothing but our shackles and the boot across our throats Our freedom and our vengeance born in blood and smoke Sharpen your knives, we strike tonight Fallen and imprisoned, Fenrir never bowed The Bifrost and his mission, our destiny is now Fenrir calls, and as God will fall when we control the track, we'll take our planet back. Passing by the passenger compartments, Sigan spots the broken lock. She pushes the door open, suspicion on her face. Then she sees Loki, and all the hardness, misery, and determination melts away in an instant. Loki, you're here, can you be real? I barely see you through my tears I saw you die for doing what is right You've come back to me and I don't care I back away, this time I'll stay Come stand at my side as we make them pay I look in your eyes, there's nothing behind What did they do? Did they take your mind? Remember your wife so they did take your life Not me at all All the suffering, strife she and sin in I have endured Yet still they win Rescue in vain, choke down my pain I swear that I'll not lose you again Hollowed and bowed, who are you now? Will you still stand when we take them? and leaves. It's at this point the recordings start to fully break down. Whole sections of the train are nothing but static for hours with random bursts of distorted audio. I can find an image of Loki wandering the carriages, other passengers staring at her in horrified confusion. There's a video of Thor and Sigan talking and discussing gaining access to something. Loki being dragged towards Odin's carriage and a still image of Thor and Sigyn standing in front of the door to the engine room the one place where the cameras never worked and Thor is bleeding and then ten minutes of Odin staring directly into the camera I cannot tell if the image is frozen, but given her previously erratic behavior, I find it hard to shake the sensation that she is watching me. And then nothing until the end. That's it. I have no more evidence. I watch and rewatch the footage I have, desperate for any clues I might have missed. 
on the monitors their faces stare out expressions set in determination and resolve four suspects any of which could have destroyed the train through accident or by design and I have no idea what happens next hold in there will be no more of your misrule I won't look away History burned through my mind This is truly me, what have I left So behind? they did take your Who life Who is this person I've given All the trust burning Reaching for memories And sending but dust Right around the corner Odin's world must burn now it is clear to me Is it the point of no return? Something but our shackles But our chains are weapons in my freedom and our vengeance will unearth the world and keep me home If it's the last thing I do then it's worth I see a new world and I must turn out it Must pay back my mind is calling And it's got easy to my face Same scenes, the same faces, over and over again. And then distortion, interference, static. It's all a blur. Hold in your time. got nothing. There's only one option left and I really, really don't want to have to take it. Shortly after the train failed to emerge, a group of bandits showed up to prey on the chaos. Their weapons and technology were utterly alien to us and it al took almost 20 years to capture them. Even stranger, in the 60 years of their imprisonment, they have stubbornly refused to age. But they have shown an affinity with technology beyond what we know. If anyone understands the Bifrost, it would be them. I hate them. Good morning, Inspector Liff. Von Raum. And what can we do for you this fine prison day? Is it about the Bifrost? E yes, how did you know? Given your known distaste for us, it's the only event with a greater than 30% chance of bringing you here. Has the train arrived? Yes, a, a few days ago. We should be going, guys. Right, well, good luck with that. I'm... 
I'm just here because I need to know what happened. What happened in the Bifrost? Ah! Well then. We shall tell you. No, you really don't. Just no. I, okay, no. That's not. Uh, okay, no, 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 no. See, shut up! I am sick of your singing. Where did you get that violin? Oh. Just sit down. Oh, you're so sorry. Oh, I'm 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 so did you break the artifact? I did, it just... I don't think it was very well made. Give it here. <laughs> don't worry, conservation effort's underway. And don't break it again. Not gonna have another chance. Okay. The recordings are clear now. I can see it all. The first recording that matters, that really matters from the engine room. Thor and Sigan stare towards where the engine should be, but there is no engine. Instead, a man lies upon a silver altar. His name is Kvasir, a low-level member of the Midgardian resistance, but that doesn't matter. What matters are the dozens of tubes and feed lines plugged into his veins, pumping, pushing his blood through the glyphs and gears and grooves that line the chamber. They are made of the same metal as the track, and they hum like a far-off chant. From their expressions, it is clear neither Thor nor Sigan had any idea what was in this room. After a moment's panicked hesitation, they run. Sigan to Kvasir, pulling out tubes, blood seeping, gushing, weeping away. Thor running to the controls, pulling switches, throwing levers. The glyphs and sigils warp and change their constellations, and then they stop. It is unclear if it was interfering with Kvasir or Thor meddling with the controls. But both of them can tell that something has gone very, very wrong. Breaking cracks in space, they come. 
charm a pace a thousand faces screaming Tearing through from where the star night there will buy and caring For the wars their squamous calls will bring their falls Now victims one and all tearing at the seams Their now inverted screams Will sound upon the breeze In the corner of dreams Oh, will play his part, he's ripped apart His scream of pain that goes insanely round the train It never wanes the first to die He's skinned alive by his own the end is nigh Now his golden eyes Still shining bright Are burst across the sky By the rainbow teeth of night And he'll never know why Standing there In that hellish chamber the no longer beating heart of the Bifrost. Thor and Sigurd stare in mute horror. The arcane glyphs and sigils spinning dry was all that powered and protected the train. Bleeds away. What have you done? I left him back on Midgard hiding on the run. Oh, mother, you will pay. Without the regulating pump of the train, Kvasir convulses and bleeds out in a matter of seconds. Screams can be heard from the carriages behind. And as the blood laps at their boots in shallow crimson waves, Thor turns and walks away to do his work. behind them. The window is no bar to the giant raging fire of an ever-dying star that reaches, rends, seizes poor doomed Frey. No weapon, no defense as his void burnt flesh is flayed. His sister Freya watches, but her new throat cannot scream as Oda, her husband, fades as though a dream. In the now eternal instant of her loss, her eyes grow wet. But instead of tears, what falls is gold and red as the final sunset. The silver and the platinum of etchings on the wall reach to her, her melting skin, their cold embrace appalls as she fuses to the core of this abomination train. Forever watching, but robbed of any way to voice her pain. She sees as tear regrows the hand he lost to Fenrir's blade as he fights the teeth of a rabid gun whose mind like sand has slipped away. But no new limb will save his blood from Garm's devouring jaws. His fingers find a heart and they merge dead upon the floor and cosmic madness reigns. In Odin's carriage she watches through the window untouched by the chaos. Loki stares at her, eyes wide, mind finally clear. What is this inside my mind that tracks out what I left behind? My eyes now clear, the call begins. Gone so long ago, Odin. What have you I've done? I've done it though. I never knew the dreams that ate at me were true. A fool I was, you bristic vain to think conquest the purpose of this my train dream. is not what we had planned. We built but did not understand. I tried to stop it. But I fail, there's no protection now. We are derailing. Yes, its higher need was reached as soon as it was free. You overcome and ran away. You could not stop the coming of the A day, a week, a thousand years means not to what the train draws near. Nuclear chaos roiling, screaming, lulled by demon flutes to keep the it dreaming. Dream. Children of the same as Arthoth calls your foolish train. Envy your dead for now.
leaving Odin to her madness. Loki walks out, heading to the front of the train to find Sigyn. At least they can die together. From the engine room, Thor emerges, mind razor keen for vengeance on the so-called All Mother. Each faces a wall of claws and teeth, eyes and flesh, unknown and squamous things from the spaces between reality. They steal themselves and advance. Across the warped remains that litter the floor, Thor and Loki lock eyes as they pass. You, don't I know you? Thor, weren't we friends? Once, I remember. Now, when it ends, where are you going for vengeance? Thor emerges from a wall of sharpened flesh and slime slick teeth. He is wounded, bleeding in a hundred places, in his hands an engineer's hammer, now chipped and caked in gore. He kicks through the door. Behind it, what once was Odin laughs. Her body now long and undulating, her one eye vast and staring, as she who once styled herself the All Mother is transformed by the touch of the gods she has unknowingly served for so long. What the fuck have you done? I have given our people apotheosis, a final completion, the touch and gaze of those to whom we are less than nothing. You planned this? You knew this would happen! When I first built this train, the snaking engine of change. I could not have guessed that this is where the songs I dreamt of would lead. But we are here. And when the train reaches Midgard, our new gods will follow and share their gift with all. You're insane. Sanity has no meaning in this place. I am the serpent into poison the sky and boil the sea. The land 
shall freeze and turn less, yields in our beckons as hands, whose voice I heard when first we built the track so long ago. All shall know my rule to be the last, and none shall survive my reign. No. Killing me will not save your world. I don't care. As he is, this is not a fight that Thor can win. Bleeding his last, he takes nine steps towards the glass wall of the carriage. He cannot escape, but any window with a hammer is also an emergency exit. And the stars claim them both. Loki emerges. She is fled by the things she passes who recognize one touched by the outer gods. She finds Sigyn kneeling, collapsed in despair. And they embrace. With tears flowing freely, Loki explains what they have to do. They cannot stop what they have touched from following them through into our world. But they can delay it. Keep the train on the track as long as possible. Together. There's been so little time to share. We've always had our loads to bear. I won't forget. I won't leave you this time. This time. Loki lies upon the altar. After uncoupling the carriages, and Sigyn pushes a single line into her wife's heart and holds it there. All she lets through is a drip, 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 flowing through the glyphs and gears. When her heart's blood is gone, the train will arrive. But until then, they are together. Through the pain, Loki kisses Sigyn.
by your side I'll hold on through this time This time So there you have it. The train has arrived and it's only a matter of time. The prisoners are gone through 40 armed guards and 20 inches of solid steel. <laughs> they were right. They were right. I've chartered a ship towards the Hodmimis mining colony, far from the Yggdrasil system. And I'm leaving as soon as I've finished this bottle. I'm not stopping there. Just refuel and keep going. If anyone else hears this report in time, I suggest you do the same. Inspector Second Class, Lifrasir Edda, signing off. Good luck. Is it, is it, is, is it the, the big finale that, oh no, everyone's dying, is it, and then everyone died, <laughs> cosmically and horribly, I'm going to give you like 10 seconds and then we'll just, oh yeah, so, what do you mean spoilers, <laughs> happened a long time ago, read a history book. I mean, it's kind of predictable. That's the ending of every set. We happen to stumble across tragic situations where everyone dies. I mean, obviously there are stories where people live, but we just choose not to tell them. Yeah, because they're boring. Yeah. Any, any luck? Any luck? Brian? It's reboot. Okay, you know what? It... I mean, we're, we're technology as well. Let's, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw all of technology under the bus just because this. I mean, is we are dying. Though. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> just can't wait. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. This is the acceleration vessel that got required immediate assistance. Message repeat. And maybe this is the acceleration vessel that got strange energy. There was a man, both good and true, all alone and lonely, branded a witch for what he could do, lost in the cosmos lonely. They took him and threw him into the sky. All alone and lonely Whence he came and where he would 
die Lost in the cosmos love. In the cold of space His eyes did bleed All alone and lonely Crystals glimmering His body did freeze Lost in the cosmos love. Lost in the cosmos, lonely. Sin is fixed forevermore. All alone and lonely. Bones encased in a screaming form. Lost in the cosmos, lonely. At last, his heart it's beating slow. Lost in the cosmos, lonely. Metal bound, his heart beats still. All alone and lonely. He is not for heaven, nor yet for hell. Lost in the cosmos, lonely. Back behind your piano. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I've got some new wings. They'll be great. They'll look really good on stage. They won't cause any disruption. How are we doing? Good? Right, well, that was fucking depressing. How about something a little bit livelier? Ashes. Hades, Hades, hear my petition, please. My name is Ulysses. I seek to bury my fractured memory. you will find is in the refuge you yourself design to be the last but I know there's more there last so if you're gonna kill me 
better do it fast Heracles, Heracles Your tired that's plain to see Oh, I might just set you free But you've got to do one thing for me I'm inclined, oh, I'm inclined To send you to a friend of mine He's got a job I think you'll find will pay the debts to which you're resigned. Required our trust. You are poor, you are poor. What you need, you can't afford. But if you can thrive outside the law, I know a job that pays what you need and more. I always enjoyed what, you know, how you always went when we went down to a planet. What is it, a god or a crime boss or a crime boss god or... Was there anything else? President. Oh! <laughs> President? Which one? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They were also a crime boss. I mean, yeah. I mean, what, what president they... isn't, though? When did the toy soldier get here? I... Tim, you know what I told you. You let it back in. I swear, the door was locked. I'm well, just happy fine. to be involved. Well, good. Anyway, at least it was better than useless prophecies <laughs> they were all true true and useful uh, it's... let's well let's see for ourselves shall we
Gawain, I know you fear the underworld hate The ghouls that live in its thunder Hunger for carrion torn asunder By blades that glint in the dark But hear me when I tell you straight Your hate misplaced, it's baseless and savage The dangers you're loathing Provoking their fear and their violence Directed at you I hear what you say and I'm listening but hangman, your words make no sense If you've looked in their eyes, you'd have seen it Barbarity, pure and intense I'd love to sit down and to pie But there's no way to teach them to serve A bullet is all they deserve Arthur, my sheriff, I've news to cheer you Your son yet lives, he's drawing near you And saved by those they blamed through fear Now he's grown up into a man You lived, you grieved, you'd never again see him But still he came, though feeling deceiving So recognize, embrace and believe him And you may yet save your world Well, hanged man, your prophecy's groundless I have no son dead or alive It's true that I once had a daughter But she fell to barbarian knives I have all those I trust around me This world's hard and I must be true There's none of that trust left for you Within the depth of the station you'd find The key that brings your salvation Ornate and hidden past pain and privation Is clutched in the captain's cold hands So take your seat, the one they warn you from Galahad Be strong, its visions may overwhelm But they won't steer you wrong Follow them through to your fate Well son, that's a hell of a story but Hangman, I'm glad you chose me I know what it's like when those bastards Just can't see Oh, I won't forget what you told me I'll do what I need If there's any way it'll save us We might be free Of the heat Of the violence Of the hatred That Galahad, though, mm. definitely top ten religious zealots. <laughs> Although, do you remember the Nova Pope? Nova Pope? Oh, yes, the... <laughs> Didn't he... You know? The Nova Pope. Didn't he turn out to be hundreds of mice in a hat? <laughs> that has no bearing on the validity of his baptisms. It was a disaster. I mean, it was a bit of a scandal, sure, but it's anyway. Point is, even he struggled at times to match the fire that I saw in Galahad. <laughs> my friends, my people, my flock. I have had a vision! A vast fiery orb floating in an endless void And there, so small, so fragile, us But falling, falling, falling into the flames Your soul is connected to the world you're in You're dragging it down with the weight of your sin Surrounded by temptation And you just give in We're falling into the flames Of that fire, that fire, that hellfire 
become slick as you perspire Oh, you think you're thirsty, now wait till it gets drier And you feel the heat of the flames Oh, that to fire, that to fire, that hell oh, fire Your sick and sinful lies will build a funeral pyre Your perversion scars the station sun, it's gone a fryer And we all fall into the flames Oh, I have seen damnation, my brothers I have felt its here and heat within my very bones but there is a way we may be saved Oh, tell us, Father Galahad Tell us, I hear you cry Is it piety? Is it purity? Is it virtue? No! The only way to save us now Is the Holy Grail itself <laughs> Well, that all but damnation Makes the sun seem pale you're quite correct to quiver, you are right to quail The only way to save us is to fire that grail Or we all fall into the flames Huzzah to fire, that to fire, that to fire Your skin starts to sizzle as you expire You claim to be virtuous, but you're a liar And you feel the heat of the flames I said, hellfire, 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 of that fire, that to fire, that hellfire, at the heart of the abode of that will now backfire. I see the end is nigh, the nation's nigh, we are. All due respect to Galahad, he did exist on a very dry world and <laughs> all the dust. Anyway, uh, speaking of motherfuckers. I mean, I'm not sure how much more introduction it needs. It? You know that was a character. Right? I thought myself an orphan I clawed my way up from the streets To earn my rank of doctor Equal to any I should meet How could I know my fame Arose from sly Olympian wings And soon I'd match myself Against the riddle of the Sphinx Four legs in the morning Two legs in the day Three legs in the evening As body and mind decay Fantasies striking poverty and the slums no one cares about Hate his host causes rapid growth in just weeks they will die Children then look as aged men who have not learned the words To cry an old withered corpse, yet a child Four legs in the morning Two legs in the day Three legs in the evening As body and mind decay Yes, he spent an experiment dissecting its chemistry And this test finally is success with the compounds I need the Consequence, painful oxidants from Olympia and eternity They have to know what it leads to Four legs in the morning Two legs in the day Three legs in the evening As body and minds decay Make a bus, you're a 
church takes a dangerous path Take a pause, find another cause, this will end in your fall Who will you be if you threaten me? I can warn you will feel my wrath Don't interfere with my calling Four legs in the morning Oedipus's defense, it's harder than it looks not to end up in a emotionally charged narrative climax where you murder your father. It's... No, it's not. It's, everyone thinks it's so easy. Oh, I'd never kill my father. But sometimes life happens. Most people don't kill their fathers. You're projecting. I, Again. I really Again. don't think I am. Anyway, what were we talking about? Love. <laughs> That's the one. We've seen a lot of great love stories through our time in the stars. Uh, you remember, uh, yes, obviously one of those love stories is between you, our loyal fans, and us. <laughs> but, yes. Uh, okay, calm down. It's not necessarily a healthy. Like, it's fine. <laughs> oh, do you remember those two moons that were so in love that they just crashed together? That, that was just gravity. That, that's no, called I'm, gravity. A lot of people died. Yes, obviously. That's why it was so touching. <laughs> oh, I'm Tim. I can have a love affair when no billions of people die because gosh, that's a crashing together. <laughs> anyway, even the moons. Even those beautiful in-love moons weren't quite at the same level as Rose and Cinders. When I was a little girl, my mother always told me someday oh. your prince will come, my love. But as I grew, I knew. Says who would hold me? I look to the stars for you, my love. Oh, my love, as the cannons were ablazing, I look to the stars for you, my love. Oh, my love, as I sit as you were raising, I look to the stars for you, my love. My world was left to burn. My stepmother and sisters betrayed our world conceding. I look to the stars for you, my love. Oh, my love, as they led me to the prison. I looked through the bars and saw you, my love. Oh, A godmother in white, she came and led me to your crimson. I held you at last in my arms, my love. Together now we long to hear the mat 
matrimonial hymn sung eternally but to you my love oh my love as the soldiers opened fire on our wedding day I ran my love forgive me Our first, do you remember? The doctor had just had a horrible accident. <laughs> Falling out that airlock, so clumsy. And we were on our own, free for the first time. And we found that beautiful conflict. I still remember. We made land. And there, over the ridge, they came cresting those scarlet battalions. Oh, they really had the most splendid uniforms. Most stylish and terrific. Didn't they just? All that lovely, vivid, bright red blood. Most bracing. Turns black after it dries. And that's contrast, you know, that's equally stylish. Shall we? Oh, rather.
of thy name on a moss covered stone. On a moss covered stone. On a moss covered stone. Uh, we've seen some good ones, haven't we? Some bad ones as well. But the, the good are the ones that stick with you. I think tonight, Ulysses.
But that's not the death you came to see. Shall we? There are lies that we tell ourselves, and there are lies we tell the universe. The crew of the Aurora once used the word immortal, and the universe believed us for a while. But no matter the eons, years, millennia, you may live, no matter the wormholes, time jumps, or parallel dimensions, all things end. And it's hard to play so much with time without learning the shape of your own end. We know where we will be when we start to slow and choose to follow Nastya into the dark. We've lived so long together, perhaps it is only fitting we die alone. Johnny dies in a bar fight on some nameless backwater asteroid after countless lifetimes of carving through every sensation it is possible to feel. He is stabbed clean through the heart and this time for some reason it sticks. When he realizes what is happening he laughs for the first time in a millennia. Witnesses will say that they have never before seen someone so viciously excited to die. When you start your existence by burning down a planet, how the hell do you end it? In Ash's case, drunk as a skunk at the very end of time. Cast forward by some freak accident, they will watch as the stars wink out. And then they'll light a cigar, the last point of illumination in the universe. And drop the match into gasoline as a final fuck you. There is so much to know in this universe, so much to learn. But when her researches become monotonous and her observations are dull, Raffaella will decide to partake in one final experiment. Taking a fragment of the ship once known as Aurora, she will cast herself into the black hole. Beyond the event horizon there, maybe to die, maybe to learn something new. One last time. Gunpowder Tim feels the end coming for a while. His aim wanders by nanometers, and his explosions seem somewhat lackluster. And so he returns to a planet that he's been saving for a very special occasion. The one that builds the largest gunship existence we'll ever see. And he goes on a final rampage. Stars shatter at the thunder of his guns until, at last, he crashes into a space station. And he isn't wearing his seatbelt. Ivy will try to retire, spend her final centuries on a small library planet with those books that mean so much to her. Unfortunately, the library will do what they are so prone to and burn in a pointless war. Ivy falls, launching an escape pod piled high with ancient texts that scholars will someday say were actually quite a dull read. Marius has always approached the concept of immortality with a little bit more scepticism than the rest of us, so his end comes as less of a surprise. One day, at something of a loose end, he will decide to check on the octokittens. Unfortunately, the purring horde has not been fed in many decades and devours him, head to toe, in 11.7 seconds. At least by my watch. the drumbot misses his first beat, he knows exactly what it means. He considers briefly the fire and bloodshed of his compatriots, but in the end the only thing that feels right is to complete the cycle. And so he casts himself into the void. His body will float there forever, far beyond the warmth of stars.
toy soldier, of course. Well, it was never real to begin with. And when all its friends are finally gone, it will decide to stop the pretending. Pointless, ignoble deaths, the lot of them. But who that lived can really boast otherwise? Thank you for joining us on our journey. is cold the books are closed and our stories told no happy ever after for a tale so old laid in blood when the story is done thank you But, but we're not quite dead, quite yet. And so, for the last time, we have one last song. Sing along if you still know the words. Tim, it's been 10 years, uh, 10 millennium. Give or take. And not once, not once, have you said please. Now this is when we now. now. Now we'll do it. Do it. Tim. Please. <laughs> Basic politeness gets a chair. That's unbelievable. What shall we do with a drunk? I don't even need to be here, do I? What shall we do with a drunk space pirate? Distant stars are waiting. Way, hey, the wormhole beckons. Way, hey, the wormhole beckons. Way, hey, the wormhole beckons. Distant stars are waiting. Shove him in the air, look to be sober. Shove him in the air, look to be sober. Shove him in the air, look to be sober. Distant stars are Way, hey, the one pole beckons. Way, hey, the one pole beckons. Way, hey, the one pole beckons. Distant stars are waiting. Strap him to the rear hall in a space suit. Strap him to the rear hall in a space suit. Strap him to the rear hall in a space suit. Distant stars are waiting. Way, hey, the one pole beckons. Way, hey, the one pole beckons. Way, hey, the one pole beckons. Distant stars are waiting. Throw him in the brink with a slavering moonbeast. Throw him in the brink with a slavering moonbeast. Throw him in the brink with a slavering moonbeast. Distant stars are waiting. Twenty kisses of the vibro lash. Twenty kisses of the vibro lash. Twenty kisses of the vibro lash. Our distant stars are waiting. With a rusty laser, distant stars are waiting. Way, hey, way, hey, way, hey, distant stars are waiting. So, it is goodbye from the crew of the Aurora. Ben Balo as Drumbo Brian. Frank Voss as Ashes O'Reilly. Tim Ledsam as Gunpowder Tim. <laughs> Kofi Young as Baron Marius von Rau. <laughs> Rachel L. Hughes as Raphael Lothognizzi. <laughs> Morgan Wilkinson as Ivy Alexandria. <laughs> the Toy Soldier as Jessica Law. 
and Johnny Sims as Johnny Deville, your humble first mate. First mate. Wait, what? I know what I said. That's what we'll do with a drunk space pirate. That's what we'll do with a drunk space pirate. That's what we'll do with a drunk space pirate. Distant stars away.